Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome here to Springfield Hoops here on Focus Springfield Community Television. We're alive at the DCU Center here in Worcester, Massachusetts for the Division I Massachusetts State Semifinals. So I am your man, Zafika Manzi, alongside with Zach Holland. Zach, it's great to have you here. Great to be here, Zul. So we're here to broadcast the Putnam Cyber Beavers playing against the St. John Pioneers. And, uh, you know, both teams have basically have the same similar record in the regular season. And they also have some history of playing against each other in this tournament. So, Zach, what could we expect in this game tonight? Yeah, as you mentioned, these two teams do have some history with each other, matching up at this same very state semifinal back in tw uh, 2014. The Putnam Beavers took this matchup home 77 to 51. So I think that we can expect another pretty good game with St. John's coming in for revenge. They're coming in hot, a 15 game win streak. Hopefully the Beavers can snap that and make a fourth consecutive state final. So there it is, folks, and also some key players to watch in this game. So the Putnam Cyber Beavers, you know, they we all expect, you know, Malone and Hayes to deliver, both seniors, both vets, but also watch out for freshman Taylor Martin, who had an astounding game against the Amherst Hurricane for the Beavers to clinch their fourth consecutive Western Massachusetts title. And uh, for the St. John Pioneer, Zach, uh, one key player to look out for is uh, Zick, I mean, excuse me, Nick Lukovic, who was a who is a senior this year. And and uh, has great size and also can uh, knock down some deep threes and go to the paint. So it's going to be a fun game tonight. Yeah. I can't wait. Let's get it rolling. Stay tuned for more action here on Focus Springfield Community Television. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Springfield Hoops. The game is about to go on the way. The Putnam Cyber Beavers playing against the St. John's Pioneers. Man, oh man, this game is about to be exciting, folks, here at the DCU Center at Worcester, Massachusetts. So, Zach, I'm pretty excited, aren't you? Oh, I'm very excited for tonight's matchup. Man, oh man. So, St. John's Pioneers, they're wearing white, and the uh, Putnam Beavers, they're wearing uh, the dark color. Black. So, uh, some, some quick facts. The Beavers, they're head coached by William Shepard in this fifth season, and the regular season record is 21 and 2. And as far as the St. John's Pioneers, their overall record was 22 and 1, and they're head coached by Robert Flo Floley, which is his 36th season. Over 850 wins as a head coach. That's something. That's impressive. That's really impressive. Wow. 36 seasons. So both coaches actually have uh, won two state championships. So we'll see who should proceed. And uh, the jump ball is about to begin. Tip off. And St. John's has possession. And we're underway, folks. 22 has it for St. John's. Top plan around the yard here. Number 30. Back to the number 12. What a shot. And the first basket is good by uh, Bradley. And the score is already 3-0 St. John's. That is some great touch and some great perimeter shooting by the St. John's Pioneers. I expect that's something that they'll take advantage of during this game. Yeah, the St. John's a great, great uh, shooting team. And uh, I believe that was a, an offensive foul. And it will be a turnover and it will be St. John's ball. So 30 will bring it up for St. John's. Putnam will be playing a man-to-man -man defense early in this game. 14 has it. And uh, oh, stolen by Abdul Raruf. Abdul Raruf is gonna try to take it to the hole. Can he do it? Strong to the basket. No good rebound, but number 34 for St. John's. That was some great hustle on defense. He just couldn't finish on the offensive end. You know, it's always important to oh, and a foul is called. Yeah, the Putnam Beavers, they're uh, really great at going to the rack. Uh, one of their players, uh, of course, uh, Martin, uh, Martin can go to the hoop, Malone, and those, as well as Hayes. It's going to be an interesting matchup to see the Putnam athleticism matched up against the St. John size on the inside. Because they do have three guys over 6'3". Yeah, St. John's, you know, they're going to try to use their size toward their advantage um, playing against the undersized uh, Putnam Beavers. But uh, the Beavers, uh, you know, they have some, a couple players uh, actually being recruited already. Uh, for college, uh, one player, of course, Malone, who is a senior this year, has a couple offers uh, from uh, UMass, uh, from Amherst, and uh, Pitt. And uh, for Martin, who is only a freshman, oh, a charge. So great hustle right there by uh, St. John's. Not a great start for the Beavers. 
Yeah, the five, Beavers probably five, need to calm it down five, here. Five, and, uh, Scores over a 5-0 St. John's. Uh, but like I was saying before, uh, Martin, who is a freshman, uh, has already been getting some uh, recruiting. Yeah. And uh, what I've heard by some reports, he's the third uh, player in the Northeast. As a freshman already. As a freshman, that's great. It just goes to show how good he is, a freshman starting on a four-time state semifinal team. Exactly, you know, of course, uh, we shall see, you know, how he can play in the future uh, for this squad. And uh, St. John's has it, trying to pounce past it, but goes out of bounds. And it will be uh, St. John's possession, last touch by Putnam. Yeah, speaking of the freshman, Martin, he actually dropped 15 points on Amherst in the Western Mass Final. So that was really kind of one of his coming out parties. And I think that he's going to put on a similar display of greatness tonight. So we shall see how that goes then. St. John, they're going to try to feed it inside to the big man. Uh, number 34 to the hoop. Oh, block. Clean block right there. I believe that was Davidson with the block. And Hayes is going to bring it up. Let's see if Putnam can get on the board here. Lukeman has it. Oh, almost picked off. Martin for three. No good. Rebound by number 34 for St. John's. That's the number 14. That size is definitely going to help St. John's on the boards. They're going to try and uh, goes out of bounds. So we should say, look at that student section for St. John's over there, you know. That is, a, that is just a spectacle to behold right now. Showing great support, you know, for their school. Number 20, Joe Murphy. So it's important to show support. The Red Storm came out in full force tonight. It's the Red Sea. And uh, St. John's has it, number 33. Has it, number 14. 14 for the jump shot, no good. And rebound by Davidson, strong rebound by Davidson for the Putnam Beavers. Yeah, I think Putnam needs to focus a little bit more on getting the ball inside and using some of their athleticism and their post scoring to get themselves on the board. That's they, can't, they can't just keep jacking up these threes. Like right there. Great pass right there by Davidson. Martin to give it to Davidson for two. Just like that, Putnam's on the board with two. And uh, 30 has it for St. John's, gives it to number 33. 33, gives it to 20. 20 going to try to go to the hoop, but trapped by the Pundit Beavers defense. A mismatch a little bit, 14 being guarded by Hayes. 30, passes to number 33. 33 trying to go to the basket. Another clean block by Davidson. And 30 has it, trying to shoot it. No good, a rebound by Malone. You know, it makes sense that St. John's comes into this game hot because they have won 15 straight coming into this contest. Yeah, they've been playing really well in, in this season. And the picked off by Malone. Martin has it. Martin to the basket. And a foul is called. So at first that was a clean block, but uh, number 30 was trying to set his se set up for the charge, but it was a blocking foul. You know, that's one of the hardest calls to make in the game, but I think they got that one right. I think so too, uh, because of course, to determine if it's a charge or a block, you have to, it depends on the player's feet. If the feet aren't uh, squared with the hips, then of course it would be a blocking foul if the player is moving, and it seems like uh, on that play, it was a, a clear foul on the punter. Uh, St. St. John's right there. I don't know if you guys can hear, but the St. John's student section is going crazy over there. Yeah, they're stopping their feet. They're stopping their feet so much that I can't even hear myself, man. And uh, 33 to St. John's, passing number 20. 20 with the jump, turnaround jump shot, no good. And uh, retains his possession. 14, 20 for the jump shot, short. And uh, who's going to get it? And uh, Hayes with the smart decision by not touching that ball and it will be fun in possession. And uh, we talked about St. John's size at the beginning of this game, and I think that uh, it's definitely manifesting itself with all the offensive rebounds that they're getting inside. Yeah, particularly in that possession right there, they had a, you know, a couple uh, offensive rebounds, but you just couldn't convert. And uh, Hayes has it. Mid-range jump shot, short. Good move, just couldn't finish. And 30 for St. John's is going to bring it up. 33, 20, oh, almost uh, couldn't see. 12 for three. Nope. There's another one of those offensive boards. And there it is. So, 
serve in the fourth. Sam Jones with the three-point lead early in this game. And you know, that, that's how you win championships. You get yourself second chances and you convert those second chances off the glass. Yeah, the hustle, of course, the, every game comes down to who wants the ball the most. And you know, hustle points, even though it's not a stat, but it does show um, heart and determination. And so far, St. John's is winning in those hustle points. And Luke Mon for three. No good, rebound by 22, gives it to 20 for St. John's. And uh, 20's gonna bring it up. 30 has it, 22. 12 for three, no good. Another offensive rebound by St. John's and Malone rips it away. And Malone sees that there's, he's gonna try to go to the hoop. And one, count the basket, Malone, count it. Malone. So strong move right there by Tyon Malone to get the layup and the foul. Let's see if he can convert it for the three point conversion. Malone will be going to the line with a chance to tie the game for Putnam. They battled their way back from an early deficit. It's good to see that they're coming in here showing some resilience. Yes, and uh, you know, uh, for the games that we've covered for the Beavers, uh, you see, well, for both games, for the uh, Western Mass uh, semifinals and the Western Mass Championship, um, in the first quarters, you know, they've been starting uh, pretty slow for both games, but then, of course, later on, they pick it up and uh, win both games. So we shall see if there might be a domino effect in this game tonight. Yeah, you know, Zul, that's a good point that you bring up because they have been on this stage for four years. Oh, oh a steal! Martin! Oh! Slow! Dunk! Look at that slow oh, dunk baby. by Martin! And, uh, you know, Martin got some bunnies in his shoes and able to dunk in that game, in that uh, possession right there. And a dunk like that just ignites the crowd, ignites the team, really gets a run going, and now they have the lead with the ball. And uh, Hayes has it for Putnam. It's kind of hard to believe that that kid right there is a freshman. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's a, you know, a bunch of grown men who can barely make layups, and oh, Malone with the wild three, no good. And uh, 14 for St. John's is gonna bring it up. Does St. John's have an answer? Let's see. And Davidson thought that was a clear block, but there was some body and contact on that play, and it will be a foul. Foul at number 23, Davidson. Yeah, Pacheco. it looked kind of clean this to me, but he did hit him with the body, so. Yeah, a little chest to chest Floyd action Floyd right there. The line, Floyd's, Floyd's going to be going to the line with a chance to tie up the game seven. right here. And you know, that is not a formula for success. You can't let the other team get the easy looks at the line. Exactly. And, uh, that was not a foul. That was a clean play. <laughs> I'm channeling in my own uh, Tommy Heinsohn impression. Hopes, ladies and gentlemen, hope you guys uh, appreciate that. <laughs> oh, maybe they have Joey Crawford calling the game. Too. Oh. Oh, speaking of Joey Crawford, uh, apparently he's uh, retiring this season. I don't know how LeBron's going to win any more championships. Oh, apparently he did uh, already retire. Oh. So I, won I wonder who's going to give LeBron all the rings now. <laughs> That's very true. You know, uh, you know, I didn't really like Crawford as a referee. And uh, 32, uh, uh, Martin with the three, no oh. good. Whoa. He just threw him to the ground there. And uh, 20. Oh! Look at that oh, glass. But St. John retains possession, and they tie back up, you know, nine it, up. It keeps coming back to those offensive boards. Putnam needs to do a better job of boxing out and fighting on the glass. They can't keep giving up two, three, four possessions per game. That's very true, and uh, Abdul Roof trying to pass it. Davidson to the hoop, no good, and an O. Oh. And a foul was called on Malone. And I believe that's the second foul already in the first quarter. And I can smell a substitution is about to come. This doesn't look good for the Putnam Beavers. Yes, it should definitely uh, minimize the fouls here. And of course, you know, if they get 17 fouls in this first half, uh, they're already will be in the bonus. And you know, you don't want that to happen, especially early on in this game. Yeah, you can't let St. John's get easy looks at the line this early in the game. That's very true, and uh, 14 for St. John's has it. Trying to work something here, guarded by Hayes on that possession. 22 gives it to 12. 12 gives it. That's a three-point shot. No good. 14, offensive rebound, and it's knocked out of bounds, and it will be the Pundit Beavers ball. I don't know. To me, it just looks like St. John's wants this game a little bit more right now. Yes, they're very determined, uh, you know, on the glass, and of course, you know, 
each time they do get an offensive board, uh, they're just not able to convert. And uh, some lackadaisical uh, shot or some lackadaisical turnover, and it will be the pundits, pundits' possession. But I mean, are we surprised that St. John's came out fiery? Two years ago, they lost by uh, 26 to Putnam in this same game. So we figured that they would come out with a lot of fire in this game. Trying to look for revenge. And uh, that was the point right there by Davidson in Putnam's last possession. And uh, about 40 seconds left to go in the first quarter. And 14 with the jump shot oh, for St. John's. And it'll be a two-point lead. St. John's 13, Putnam 11. 30 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Hayes has it. Hayes trying to, trying to look something inside, but brings it out. Pick and roll. Hayes, jump shot. And oh, that looked out. like a lot of contact there, but the refs didn't see anything. 22 could have hold on to the ball there. Oh, and, what uh, a great hustle play by the Putnam Beavers. And the Beavers, they got trying to look for the last shot in the quarter. Hayes, one second left. Hayes, look at that. Oh. oh. Could not go and get the layup, and that'll be the end of the first quarter, folks. Putnam 11, St. John's 13. So, Zach, what are your impressions in the first quarter so far? I think that uh, the score definitely is not very reflective of what's been going on in the game. I feel like St. John's been controlling the glass. They've been controlling uh, the perimeter of Putnam. Putnam's not been able to get any good looks from outside. So I think that the Beavers need to try to do two things. They need to, one, crash the glass better on defense, and two, they need to get inside more with their scores like Martin and Malone. That's very true. We shall see when the second quarter is about to begin. How do you feel about the uh, development with Malone having to leave uh, in the first quarter due to the foul trouble? How do you think that'll affect the Beavers in the game? Well, I believe that, um, you know, of course, fouls, you, you gotta be really uh, careful, and especially again, playing against a good team like St. John's. And, um, you know, Something about uh, Malone is that, of course, you know, he does bounce back from, uh, uh, from fouls. And uh, the point forward uh, for uh, the Beavers is definitely, um, was it, would you believe Malone will be the point, it was the point forward. I think when Malone gets out of the game, Martin can definitely take over that role. Yeah. Even as a freshman, I think he's definitely showing some signs of maturity and of leadership. So I think that the Beavers are gonna weigh heavily on him. Yep. Oh, he, excuse me, I believe Martin. That's he's kind of like forward, a uh, high school version of Giannis of the oh, Bucks. Oh, oh, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Oh, once again, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, for those who don't know, Zach and Brendan are brothers, and they both love Giannis Antetokounmpo very much. Man, oh, man. And the second quarter began, and uh, Hayes with the jump shot, and it couldn't go into the basket and third for St. John's. It's just, it's just very rare that you get a player that tall with the handles and the outside touch that Martin has. It's very true. And St. John's with three. another three. Bradley is on fire. It's another three for Bradley, and it's 16 to 11, St. John's with the five point lead. And the student section is definitely enjoying this one. Oh yes, they're very happy. And Abdul Roof passing it. Davidson to the paint. No good. Rebound by 20 for St. John's. That was a great backdoor cut that we witnessed right there. Just couldn't capitalize on it. And uh, number uh, 30 gives it to number 13. Back to 30. Number 12 for three. Short. Oh, and St. John's number, I believe that was number, uh, was that 30 or 20? St. John's I can't tell. Possession. Number 20 with the offensive board. Oh, it'll be a jump ball. It'll be St. John's in counting it. Alex Bradley. Putnam's lucky that that shot from the corner didn't land. I feel yes. like that would have been a knife in the Putnam team yeah. to get down that early in the game. Yeah, especially you don't want to be in an eight point uh, deficit. That is a big deficit to overcome. And uh, oh, goes out of bounds, almost hits those laptops at, in, the, in the table over there. It will be- uh, Let's hope those things have some insurance on them. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, if, oh, four seconds left to go on the shot clock. Yes, of course, you want to get some of that apple care. Uh, this this 36-year coach probably has a great play drawn up. And a three. Oh, man, another rebound. Another one. Another one. Man, I feel like DJ Khaled up in these streets. Oh. <laughs> and uh, Putnam has it. <laughs> Abdul Raouf for three. No good. Rebound by 30. And uh, oh. I saw those feet out of bounds. And Putnam's going to get another chance at this one. 
and a substitution, 12 is going to uh, sub, out, sub out 30 for St. John's. Putnam has been ice cold from outside. They need to get something going from beyond the three-point line. We shall see, and uh, Martin's going to inbound it, gives it to uh, number 10. That's Kieran. Oh, steal. St. John, 20. Oh, what a great hustle play. That was a great hustle by Hayes to knock it out of his hands. Those are the kind of plays that Putnam needs to get themselves back in this game. Exactly, those little plays, you know. Of course, you know, those don't make the, uh, the top 10 sports center uh, highlights, but those little things, of course, help uh, good teams win games. You know what does make the highlights? The 15 that Hayes dropped on Amherst in the uh, Western Mass Final. Oh, yes, especially that dunk. That, uh, Martin had. Oh, that dunk was unreal. That was crazy, man. And uh, St. John's has it, number 14. Oh, look at that scoop. Couldn't convert. And Kearney with the rebound. Good they need rebound. to battle for every single rebound under there. Especially being undersized. And Hayes has it. Hayes trying to work something. Gives it to Kearney. Back to Hayes. Hayes. And the, oh. And out of bounds, it will be St. John's possession. His feet touch out of bounds. So I think the Putnam Beavers kind of need to slow it down. You know, there's 30 seconds on the shot clock. You know, there's no need to rush. They do look a little bit rushed and hurried in this game. I do think that I agree with you. They need to dribble the ball up the court a little bit slower, survey their options like St. John's is doing. They're swinging the ball around the perimeter, looking for people in the middle and then dr either driving in or kicking it out for an open three. So, like this one right here. Bang. Number three. Bang. Bradley for three. Someone get a fire extinguisher, because Bradley's going to burn down the house. <laughs> and that's very true, Zach. This and that's a, a timeout a for the Beavers. St. John's 19, Putnam 11. It's an eight-point lead. So, what we were just saying earlier, you know, we uh, the Putnam Beavers, they should not be in a deficit by uh, eight points. And as you see right here, folks, it's an eight-point game. So what do you think uh, the Beavers should do coming out of this timeout? What? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Sorry, I guess the crowd is a little bit too loud. <laughs> what I was saying was, what do you think the Beavers should do coming out of this timeout to get back on track? Yeah, sorry, the student sections are so loud I can barely hear myself think. <laughs> but yeah, I think that the Beavers, one thing that they really need to do is they just need to slow down and they need to realize that it's really early in the game. They don't need to be jacking up these desperation threes like they're down two at the very end of the game. I think that they can take it slow, they can pound it inside like they're really good at with Martin, Malone and uh, Hayes, and I think that they should take more advantage of the athleticism and the post skills that their players have. And then in turn, that will just open up the three-point line even more for their knockdown shooters to get them big points. So we shall see, and uh, the timeouts finished. Both teams are about to uh, come out from the uh, timeouts. Well, thankfully, we see Malone back on the floor for Putnam. So we'll see Malone will be, you know, a little bit more aware and alert about how he commits uh, his, his, uh, his fouls and plays. And uh, Martin gives it to uh, Thomas. Thomas gives it to Martin. Martin trying to work something here. Oh, almost stolen. And uh, Putnam still has possession. Hey, strong move. And couldn't get to the basket. Kearney, oh, block. Malone gets the, gets the ball back for Putnam. Martin to the basket. Do I smell a charge? I don't know about that one, Zool. That was kind of debatable. Uh, I, guess, I, don't, I don't know if he had his feet set there. I don't quite agree with that call. Yeah, and apparently, you know, the referees uh, believe that was a charge. And uh, Coach Shepard was trying to protest uh, for that call. But of course, you know, the ref is not going to change the call right now. And uh, St. John's is going to bring it up. Under five minutes left to go in the first half. St. John's is looking to push this lead to double digits. And 14, oh, 14 for three. No good, rebound Malone. You know, it's, st it's still early in the game, so I don't want to say anything too definitive, but the Putnam Beavers definitely have to pick up their play if they're gonna, if they're gonna survive in this one. St. John's came ready to play today. Oh, and uh, trying to do a back court, a back cut right there, but couldn't convert. And uh, oh, out of bounds, and Putnam gets lucky there. Substitutions for Putnam, number one, Tyreek Thomas. For St. John's, number 34, Cole Stairs. And uh, we see Thomas coming for the Beavers. He should be uh, 
a good spark plug off the bench to get the Beavers going here in the second quarter. You see how so the Pundit Beavers have three guards they're really going small. Uh, Abdul Raouf, Thomas, and Hayes. That's an interesting choice because St. John's does have the size. Maybe they're trying to beat them with the speed and the quickness. I think that's what they're trying to do, and Malone brings it out. Oh, wait. I saw a lot of contact on that, but there's no foul called. Yeah, notice Malone was trying to shoot. And uh, five seconds on the shot clock. Kearney, no good. Oh, Hayes. I, I heard the St. John's crowd was trying to trick uh, Putnam by, uh, by lying about the shot clock. You can't do that. They're too smart for that. Exactly, and they got lucky. It's 13-19, St. John with a six-point lead. Now, that was a beautiful hop step. Couldn't convert. 22, the St. John's, whoa. Almost lost control there. And, uh, oh, 12 for three. Now that rebound. was one crazy possession. If that had ended in a three, that would have broken the hearts of the Putnam Beaver fans. That would have been bad. Oh, Kearney just couldn't. Man. This nope. is the sloppy performance by the Putnam Beavers. They just cannot get a grip on that ball, and St. John's has possession. And a lackadaisical travel. That was definitely a travel. I counted one, two, three steps. That was definitely a travel. That's very true, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, oh man, you can't be moving like Kendrick Perkins on the floor like that. <laughs> what does he think this is, ballroom dance? <laughs> right, exactly, you want me to play some ballroom music? <laughs> Come on, St. John's, and Putnam has it. Abdul Raru for three. Oh, in and out. I really thought that one was gonna fall, Zool. Me too, and uh, another foul on Malone. Oh, another foul, Malone. That'll be his third foul. Putnam foul number five, Tyon Malone. Wow. His third personal foul, so, 17 fouls of the first half. Th three fouls for Malone already in the second quarter. So Malone is in heavy foul trouble. As you can see from his response, he is not happy by that call. This is shaping up to be one of the big storylines of this game. The what if if Malone hadn't gotten the second and now the third foul. Yes, and he's, he has to be careful. And uh, I believe uh, Putnam Beavers, they're in, uh, over in the penalty. Yep, they're over the bonus. And uh, it would be one and one free throws for St. John's. But you know, I wouldn't be worried if I was uh, Putnam. Yes. They've dealt with a lot of adversity through this four year run that they've had. And I don't think that uh, losing Malone for a couple minutes should really hurt them. They've battled back from a lot of early deficits, as you said. Yeah. And uh, definitely losing last year in the state final showed them some adversity. And I think that they're ready to battle back right now. I predict uh, they're going to make a little run here with some really good offense, some efficient offense, and some really tight, competitive defense on the other side. Let's see. Lewis shall see. It's already an eight point, back to an eight-point lead. And Davidson, oh, it's, yeah, Davidson couldn't get the ball there. St. John's with the steal. 14! Oh, the play! That's at him, Floyd, with the uh, layup. Ten-point lead! That was a great move to push the lead to double digits, Sewell. You know, I just don't know what Putnam's doing. I don't know where all these turnovers are coming from. I've never seen them play this sloppy before. Me too, and Hayes with the jump shot. Can't get it there. Man, St. John's is really dominating on the boards for both sides on the court. And uh, Floyd gives it to 22, a three. Bang! Man! And a timeout is called. And St. John's, they're feeling it right now. For some threes flowing in. The St. John's fans are on their feet here in the DCU Center. If you could see this. Man, they're going hard, and it's a 13-point lead. Man. And they're jumping up and down. They're, they're happy right now. So, Zach, what do you think uh, the Pundit Beavers, as far as defensive-wise, what do you think they should be doing uh, defensively? I think they can't crowd the three-point line as much. They need to keep their spacing, and they need to keep uh, a man on every body because, as you see, they're getting a lot of open threes with the dribble penetration. They keep collapsing on the driver when they really need to be staying out on the line with the elite shooters. They can't be giving up these open threes. That's the way that you give away uh, a deficit like this. They're literally doubled up on them right now. Right, and uh, only uh, two minutes and 10 seconds left to go in this uh, first half. This is a complete role reversal of the game from 2014. That game was all Putnam, 77-51. Oh, yeah. 
This is shaping up to be a big blow for the St. John's Pioneers, but I'm not going to give my final judgment since it's still the first half. Right, it's still very early, and uh, you know, upon them, you know, like we discussed, you know, they've they're used to facing a little adversity. Um, you know, as a matter of fact, in the Amherst game, there are times Amherst were uh, beating uh, Putnam by five points and whatever. And uh, of course, you know, Putnam has always come back in the third quarter. You know, both games we've covered, uh, the Beavers uh, always make strong statements coming into the second half. And we shall see in Hayes, but Putnam's got to bring it up. Yeah, I think Putnam really needs to rely on their playmakers in this. Uh this point in the game because they really need to get back into the swing of things. That's what they need to do. Abdul Roof was trying to shoot that three from the corner and it was deflected and swatted uh, that. Just swat like a like a like a fly. Oh whoops. I don't think Putnam can come up empty on this possession. That'll really kill their spirits. Oh a tough That's runner in the lane goes. Come on. And uh, that was a basket right there by Thomas. I think in a couple minutes we'll be talking about how that was a turning point in this game. 30 for the basket. Oh, nice defense right there. Oh, I, I just don't understand how that can still be St. John's ball. Yeah. It, it, well, I mean, it, it seemed like there was about two Gundam players going after for that ball. So, uh, so I guess it would be reasonable why uh, it goes last touch by Putnam. Let's see if Putnam can hold here defensively. Oh. St. John's calls timeout. And a timeout Bob for St. John's. Bob Foley wants to talk this one over with his team. So you like, know, yep, what, go ahead. what do you think about the, uh, the St. John's Pioneers undefeated on the road? Do you think that plays into a game in a neutral site? I think so because, you know, uh, we all know playing on the road is difficult, more difficult because, you know, you're playing on a court that you're not used to. And for St. John's to, uh, to be pretty successful playing uh, not on their uh, home turf has been pretty uh, outstanding. So, uh, you know, so that means they're able to play in uh, a lot of different um, courts. And, uh, you know, no matter where the place is, it could be in the middle of the street and they could probably still uh, win some games. Yeah, I think one thing that i like to point out is uh, this is basically a home game for St. John's. Yeah. I mean, they've got their whole student section here. We're only 15 to 20 minutes away from Shrewsbury, so oh, I think that we true. can definitely put this one in the home tally for St. John's, and I think that's definitely playing a part in the big lead that they have right now. It's very true, and for some reason, the St. John's uh, crowd, they're, they're, they're saying something to some people. I don't know who they're talking to. They better not be talking to me, or someone <laughs> might get some beating. <laughs> I don't think that they would mess with you, Zool. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you for letting me know, Zach. I know, you, I know you got my back. Oh, I got your back, all right. All right, cool. Speaking of getting their backs, Putnam needs to get their, to get their men, like, locked down right now. Exactly. Because they can't let up another bucket. Oh, that three would have... They really need to work on this rebounding deficit. That's what they need to do. I mean, the Beavers, they're playing on a 2-3 zone defense. Oh, my God. 12 for another three. Bang! Wow! Bradley for another three. Zach, how, do you, how many three-point shots do you how? think Bradley has? Bra uh, what? Uh, uh, Bra <laughs> Bradley is just blowing my mind right now. Like, there are things that I've never seen a man do, and this is one of them. Bradley <laughs> is shooting the lights out tonight. Shooting really to well. Hayes, no good. Rebound, 22. Under a minute left to go in the first half. St. John with a 14-point lead against the Beavers. I think Putnam would love to cut this deficit to single digits before they go into the locker room for halftime. We shall see. And St. John's going to get another three? I don't know. 14. Wow, wide open uh, mid-range shot. Thomas with the rebound. Thomas is going to push it. Thomas all the way. And one. There should have been a foul called and uh, no foul. And uh, it's back to a 12-point game. That's, this is the way that Putnam's going to get back into it. A stop on one end and a score on the other. They just got to string together a couple of possessions like that and they'll be fine. That's what they need to do. The shot clock is off. And another jump shot. No. Eight, seven seconds left. Davidson. Thomas. Oh, double clutch move. Davidson off with a rebound. Oh. And a foul. Martin will be going to the line with one second left to try to cut this lead to 10. Five years foul on 22, Nick Lukasiewicz. That'd be uh, Davidson. Uh, go to the Davidson foul line. Pacheco at the foul line for Putnam. Davidson Pacheco, Pacheco two shooting shots. two shots. 1.2 seconds left to go in the first. 
half. And you know, that is the kind of offensive board and uh, physical play that's gonna win them a state championship. Makes it on the first. A little bit of a lucky bounce there, but it goes down. Substitution on the fourth for St. John's. 11 point lead, St. John's 29, Putnam 18. Wow, that St. John's fan section is really giving him all he can handle. Yeah, they making a lot of noises. Davis. But he is unfazed. Davidson makes both free throws, 10 point lead. St. John, they're gonna try to do a, um, what Christian Leitner did. Oh my God, don't do it to them. Oh! oh! Look at that play! Oh! Oh! Hey! What a play by St. John's. And I can't believe what I just saw. And the Trevs go crazy, and that's the end of the first half. St. John's 32, put up 19. So can you explain to me what we just saw? I am without, I can't say nothing. I'm so clueless right now that we got to go to the second half. And I we'll can't even right hear myself think the DCU center just exploded. And we'll be right back for more action here on Focus Springfield Television. So welcome back here to the game, ladies and gentlemen, the Division I state semifinals here at the DCU Center in Worcester, Massachusetts. The Putnam Beavers playing against the St. John's Pioneers, and uh, it's a 13-point game. Can you guess who's winning? Don't worry, I'll let you know. It's St. John's 32 and Putnam 19. Wow, so, you know, by the, the end of that first half, we saw a crazy play. 1.5 seconds left to go, and I believe it was 1.2, actually. And, um, you know, we saw St. John's making a deep pass looking like, uh, you know, Christian Lehner from Duke back in the early 90s, and they made a three to extend the lead. So, Zach, what were your thoughts in the first half? That was just, that was one of the craziest plays I've ever seen, and I think it kind of just summed up the St. John's half yeah. in, a, in one play. Right. Everything was going straight buckets for them in the first half. Exactly, and uh, you know, one key player for uh, St. John's that has been playing exceptionally well and hitting some great threes is um, Alex Bradley, uh, the junior guard. And uh, you know, he's been hitting some really clutch threes to um, help his uh, squad to uh, extend these leads. And for the Pundit Beavers, you know, they really need to calm down with these fouls, don't you think? They really need to get their act together on defense and play hard, but not play dirty. They really need to just tighten up and not let give up open threes and easy layups. Yeah, one thing we were also, too, uh, we noticed in the first half was that, uh, you know, Malone uh, was in early foul trouble and wasn't able to play uh, that much for his team. A travel's called. No one, two, three, that's a travel. <laughs> there it is, you can't be traveling in these streets, brother. And, uh, you know, for Malone, of course, you know, he's in foul trouble. And, uh, you know, what do you think he should be doing uh, to go on in this game? Uh, I mean, I really think that just on D, they need to be worrying about going straight up. Uh, they really need to be protecting the paint. As you can see there, the, just the threat of an open three let number 14 get great position on the inside. So they need to stay true to their defensive mindset, and they just need to trust that their system is going to work. And really, they need to trust each other. Right. Yeah. Trust is a major thing. And uh, St. John's has possession, number 22, being guarded by Malone. Oh, backcourt. Backdoor cut right there. And that was uh, number 14 at him Floyd with the shot. If that was Putnam, it would have been a dunk, but nonetheless, a good play by St. John's. Very true. And uh, Hayes has it. Being guarded by Bradley. And uh, man, last touch by Putnam, and it goes out of bounds. This is just a shocking turn of events just two years ago. The situations were exactly reversed, and I think that Putnam would give anything to be back in that position right now. Very true. And of course, you know, of course, you know, it's early in the third quarter. It's, it's still early. They still got time. You're right. They can't be as porous on defense, though, if they're going to try to. Oh, that would have just been. That, that would have been. That would have. I. I would have left the building if that <laughs> one. I would have left the we building, Zool. Would have packed up our JVCs and gone back to focus. And uh, Martin. Martin with the shot right there, and uh, it's back to a 12-point game. Lukovic, oh, to the basket. Oh, great stop right there by Malone the Malone is really going in on D now without fouling, which is important. Davidson has it. And uh, travel. That was not a travel! 
number 20, Joe. There is no way that that was a travel. I counted two steps. No, they, I mean, I'm not going to lie, Tommy. You know, there's a lot of steps in that These play. refs are ridiculously against us. I, I want new ones. You know, he's doing a lot of stepping on that play right there, and it will be a turnover. He's just doing a little two-step jig. I don't think that was a travel. You know? It's like he's dancing uh, the step to the name of love, like R. Kelly. And, uh, oh. Oh, no! And a foul was called. Oh, Saint foul John's on St. John's. Number 14, Adam Floyd. You know, I, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm definitely noticed seven. Putnam picking up the intensity. I think they finally realized that their season's on the line. Yeah. I, wonder, I wonder what Shepard told him in the locker room, but whatever he said, it's certainly working. <laughs> well, it was definitely a lot of yelling and screaming. I, I, I think I might have heard of some of it from in here in yeah, the arena. Me too. It seemed like, you know, I was hearing the ghost of Stephen A. Smith. And uh, Hayes, oh, blocked right there. And Hayes gets it back and shoots it. Hey. Hayes gets the last laugh on number 14. And it's back to a 10-point game, and the Beavers are going to try to cut this to uh, see digits. Oh, and just like that, it's a 10-point game. We got uh, Martin locking up Floyd. Number 30 has it for St. John's. You know, that was an early double team right there. Number 34 for St. John's has it, gives it to Floyd. Floyd to the hoop. Oh, oh. almost caught offensive rebound by St. John's. Another Not one. another three. Oh, and it goes out of bounds. Man, St. John's, like we were saying in the first half, They've been pounding the glass. They have been pounding the glass. Just, and uh, the Beavers, they just need to, uh, you know, box out and try to get some more rebounds. And uh, Floyd is gonna, oh, stolen, oh, almost, oh, man, another 34. Another rebound. Uh, almost another rebound. Malone is gonna try to go. Bodies oh. are on the ground. Hayes has it. You know, this is what I like to see. A lot of young men out there putting their bodies on the line to win a basketball game. That's what we like to see. That's what we want. Floyd has it. Floyd, oh, up fake move. Couldn't convert. Another one. See, they really need to be bo they really need to be boxing out more on the glass. They that really is do. just ridiculous. And another, and a foul was called. I wonder who the foul was on. Beavers foul at number 23, David. I'm starting Pacheco. to wonder if Putnam came into this game thinking it was gonna be a cakewalk. Yeah, of course, you know, like we, like we were mentioning, uh, back, you know, two years ago, Putnam defeated St. John's by 26. So I guess, you know, and also one thing we do uh, mention, we mentioned in the actual Central Girls game playing against Chicopee Comp, how Central Girls, you know, they're not really challenged um, enough. And, uh, you know, in that, in their playoff run, uh, they beat uh, Shepherd Hill by 52 points and eventually lost to Chicopee Comp. And you know. as you see here by the Pundit Beavers, you know, majority of the season, they really haven't been challenged. And this is like their first game, especially in these playoffs, that they're really being challenged. It kind of reminds me of those uh, Kentucky Wildcats from last year. Go 38-0, end up in the Final Four, but who do they really have to face to get there? It's a similar situation with Putnam. They've kind of breezed through the season. Yeah, very much so. And St. John's has a number 20 jump shot. No good. Offensive and foul. I believe that was an over and back call. St. John's it's foul still a 10 point game. Three, three minutes and 57 seconds left. You know, left to go. this game is a lot closer than it looks. Right. Putnam gets a basket here. It's an eight, seven point game. That is easily within two or three possessions. So I think this is gearing up to be a, a, a fight to the finish, I think. We shall see. This one's going 12 rounds. <laughs> Hopefully, no one doesn't get knocked out. And uh, Hayes has it, being guarded by Bradley. Malone. Oh, what a great play. What a great play by Malone. And uh, now it's time for, you know, Malone to take over for the Beavers. You know, this is, you know, he's the captain. You know, he should be the one, you know, right now to be taking charge. And, oh, great defense right there oh, by Davidson. but they can't finish the defense with a rebound. And there it is again. It, it doesn't matter how good the defense is. If you can't finish the possession with a rebound, it doesn't mean jack squat. Exactly. And Lukasevich with that shot. It's a 10-point game again. Oh. You know, the game is just very sloppy right now. Putnam needs to slow down, and they really got to focus on Malone. Right there. Right there. They're, right there. they're going to their senior leadership. He can get them 40 points a game if he needs to. In fact, 
Didn't he just have 39 and 20 in a game earlier this season? Yes, he did. He had 39 and 20 against uh, 39 and 20? Central Golden Eagles. Yeah, that's a big meaty game. Those are game some he Shaquille O'Neal numbers right there. Oh, some Will oh, Chamberlain. Yeah, those are Shaquille O'Neal numbers, definitely. But uh, you know, the difference between Malone and O'Neal is that uh, Malone, when he talks, he actually has an education. <laughs> And uh, 30 with the, with the free throw. <laughs> and you know, he's also in shape. Oh yeah, it's very true. Yeah, Shaq, uh, you know, uh, you know, big man. You no, know, of course, when you retire from the league, he puts he puts the big in big man for sure. <laughs> yes, exactly. And uh, you know, a lot of pounds. And uh, Putnam's finding their flow offensively, but they still can't finish plays with the defensive rebound, and it's given St. John's a ton of opportunities to get second chance points. And there's a substitution on the floor. Uh, Hayes subbed out by Thomas. Davidson has it. Gives to Abdul Raouf. Abdul Raouf. Bang! Three. Ah, oh, no good. And Floyd with the shot, with the uh, rebound. Oh! Oh! And that was a kick ball. All right, that that was a questionable call. I didn't see anything wrong with that. Uh, are you sure, Zach? I mean, I definitely saw some. Another foot kick action. ball. Another kick ball right there. The St. John's player just kicked it. I can't see it. The ref. The ref's got to be blind. Oh, whoa. Hopefully, Steven Wonder isn't the ref out there. So, um, <laughs> oh, and oh, that looked good until it until it wasn't. Until it wasn't, and uh, Putnam has it. Abdul Raouf with the shot. Abdul Raouf jump shot. Oh, they they can't be giving these easy easy possessions to St. John's. They got to be grinding them into the ground on offense. And definitely for offense too. The Beavers should definitely just. Uh, you know, take it to the hole. Another three. Whoa, and that was Luka Savic. Luka Savic for, for a three, and it's back to a 13-point game. You know, they can't be giving up any more threes to this team. This team is too good at shooting to be giving up these threes. That's very true, and Martin has it. Malone, no good. I saw a lot of contact there, but the rest didn't think that it warranted a trip to the line. I guess no blood, no foul, and uh, oh. Another one. Another three. No good. Rebound and, you Malone. Know, Malone. Malone's really trying right now. Malone knows that this could very well be the last game of his career at Putnam. Right. And I think it's starting to set in that he needs to step up his game and be that senior leadership presence that they need. Early, you know, he was just calling for the ball. Martin, Martin for three. Short. Rebound. Floyd. And a charge foul. You know, I think that was the right call. Yes. Floyd really came in too hot, and uh, Putnam definitely had their feet set on that one. So that was a great play right there by Bill Roof. And uh, substitution Hayes subs out Bill uh, Roof. Buck 16 left to go in the third quarter. You're watching Springfield Hoops here on Fox and Springfield Community Television. I am your man, the figure man, alongside with Zach Holland. You know, I think this this time of the game, end of third quarter, fourth quarter, is really when the student section and the home court advantage come One into play. play. It's a clean John. block right there. St. John's tipped in, no good. Davidson rebound. You know, even though it didn't go in, Putnam got lucky there. Gave up two chances. Malone, no good. Rebound St. John's. What a great move by Malone. He needs to finish opportunities like those. Well, Malone is definitely is trying to carry the team on um, in the shoulders, you know. Uh, trying to get his team back. I mean, whoa, it's already almost 30 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Zach, I don't this, know about you, but this quarter went by really fast. This game has been flying by. And you another know, steal. That's exactly the kind of sloppy play. You can't really call that a steal when they just give it to him. Exactly. Thomas has it. Shot clock is off. Thomas is trying to go to the hole. Slow, Putnam should. I, they yep. might slow it down, wait for the last shot. That's what I would do if I were Martin. Under 10 seconds left to go. Martin, oh. L loses it. Hayes, deep three. Bang! Good. Oh. You know, I'm starting to get nervous whenever the buzzer's coming because my heart stops every single time. First, we got that St. John's full court pass. Then we got that. Who was, was that Hayes? That was Hayes. Hayes with the pull up, bringing the game within 10. You know what? I think that might be one of the most game changing plays in this whole contest because Putnam really needed that play. They needed that, you know, especially, you know, going into uh, the, 
the fourth and final corner of, quarter of regulation, and that's definitely what you know the Putnam Putnam Beavers need. They need some spark in their uh, in this game right now. You know, Putnam's been to three straight state championships. I think in that huddle right now, I bet the it's along the lines of we don't want this run to end, and we got to step it up if we want to get to a fourth straight. And I agree, they really got to do their best. That's what they have to do, and of course, you know, Coach Shepard. He's really trying to get his team uh, motivated to win this game and so that they can win another state championship. The St. John student section celebrating like they already won. Maybe they don't know that we're not playing hockey. There's a fourth quarter that we got to go to. <laughs> That's very true. You, know, you can't never get a little bit too excited. You know, that excitement might come back to bite them in the butt if they get a little too excited. Exactly. Each and every one of those fans might get a bite in the butt if they overexcite themselves. I'm not going to do the biting, but I, <laughs> I agree. Yeah, exactly. You know, I'll put duct tape over my mouth. And uh, so timeout is, uh, oh, it ain't no timeout. The fourth quarter is about to begin. Both teams are coming out. You know, out. we got eight bucks left on the clock. You know, we got eight more minutes. This is where the champion is separated from the loser. Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, of course, heart and determination is going to be the outcome. Let's see if Putnam is capable of coming back in this game. You know, and, uh, I think I think Malone's going to need a Vince Young type performance from uh, from him to win this game. I think he's really going to need to put the team on his back and show everyone that he's really about to be a D1 athlete next year. That's very true. And uh, oh, just a quick question: You said uh, Vince Young? That's that's football. Yeah. Right? Well, I mean, clutch is clutch. Yeah, that's clutch very is true. Clutch is clutch. That's very true. That's very true, Zach. And uh, Hayes has it. And uh, Hayes is, you know, they're trying to work something out. Oh, and, uh, go in the post him alone. I like that. I like that. It's a smart move. You know, you know, the one thing that's really separated them is that the St. John's guards have been making all the right choices in this game. When they've been getting open shots, they've been taking them. When they've been needing to post the guy up, they've been doing it. I just think that the Putnam guard decision making has been a little lackluster in this game for me. And I think that's a big difference in this game. Very true. Malone will go to the line shooting too. First free throw is good. Did that even did I even sniff the rim? I don't think so. No, no, me neither. Nothing but that on that one, on the first free throw. No, so you know, he's really been locked in ever since halftime. Yeah. I wonder if he's got some of Michael's special stuff during halftime, but he's really <laughs> Yeah, been definitely, in. you know, Bugs Bunny or someone was kind of get motivate them and uh You know, see alone, the ball never good. even met the rim on either of those two free throws. They had never even been acquainted. So I guess he was uh, drinking some of Michael's secret stuff. But as a kid, I was curious, what was exactly the secret stuff? It couldn't just be water. St. John's, oh, felt the basket and the foul. You know, Putnam got unlucky there. They got a deflection. They just couldn't find the ball. Ball came right back to St. John's. That's an unlucky break for the Beavers. So unfortunately, you know, that went through for the Beavers. And it's an eight-point game. You know, I think St. John's can taste the state championship uh, game right now because every time they score, the DCU center is erupting with their fans. Yes, and I'm not going to lie to you. Throughout this whole game, St. John's have been very consistent. They have. Uh, I, I completely agree. They brought it from the first first tip to the final buzzer. Exactly. Oh, the final buzzer is not there yet, Zach. That's, but <laughs> that is true. I trust that Putnam will make a run. And a spin move couldn't go right there from Malone. Oh, oh, we need some lockdown D right now. Oh, look at that up and under move. Who does he think he is, LeBron James? <laughs> well, he couldn't get that there, and a foul was called. You know, I think that's a bailout call, Zool. I think that he made a stupid move, but, I mean, to, to each his own. Each his own. I don't know. I mean, it, I, it seemed like there was some contact there. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> well, you know, I got... I, I, once uh, Tommy Heinsohn started to have health problems, Something I think he can take over his job. I mean, at this point, do you think he'll ever quit? He's been going on 100 years now, right? No, man, those now. guys are old. I mean, they've been, you know, I've read a recent study that Tommy Heinsohn actually covered the first basketball game at Springfield College. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Hudson's been there for every rap, every banner they ever every hung in the Every single rap. game. You know, him and Bill Russell were high school buddies, actually. Yeah, matter of fact, fun fact, you know, Heinsohn and Russell were both rookies on the first uh, championship squad for the Celtics. Oh, really? Yeah, back in 1957. I did not know that. And, you know, uh, maybe if one of these players is lucky, they'll play for the season. We shall see, you know. Of course, you know, a couple of recruits 
you know, for the Beavers, just to see if they will take this bas you know, take their basketball career, you know, a little bit further. You know, the Putnam Beavers keep get, keeping it within 10 points, but they really need to make a run right now. Yes. If they're going to have any chance of this game. It's very important right now. And uh, this is a St. timeout John's call. Timeout. St. John's, 6.48 left to go. It's a 10-point game. I'd like to give a quick shout out to the crew members that are helping us out and making us sound good and look good. Cameraman Josue Vasquez and Brendan Holland. Yeah, put that thumbs up, Brendan. <laughs> the Putnam cheerleaders are putting on a good show right now. About the only thing from Putnam that's doing anything good today. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. You know, uh, I feel like, you know, the play of the game was definitely that flip. I agree. You know, the cheerleaders have been playing really well. Oh, here, here comes the St. John fans. Oh, wow, look at that. I'm not sure what just went on there, Zul. I'm not sure, honestly. I heard no sensei. Uh, maybe that was see, some Karate Kid right yeah, there. Yeah, some Karate Kid, and it's like, come on, man, you guys cannot get some numb chucks and trying to be beat me up. I don't know. I think maybe they forgot they were playing basketball. Maybe they want to go put on a dress and do some karate. Yeah, exactly. Trying to wear some, uh, you know, kung fu attire. You know, none of them probably have no black belts. Yeah, You're I the mean, best around. <laughs> uh, that's a good one, Zool. I would sing too if I didn't want to scare all the children away. <laughs> Sorry, little children. <laughs> and uh, Martin's going to, you know, inbound this thing for Putnam. You know, I think that they really need a basket here if they have any chance of winning this game. Yeah, you know, uh, you know what we mentioned uh, last game, uh, from uh, actually from NBA 2K, uh, Kevin Harlan once stated, you know, basketball is a game of runs. And, you know, Putnam Beavers, they really need a run to get back in this game uh, because... Oh, I think that St. John's might have touched that ball last. But what, what were you saying, Zul? Well, I was saying was because the only way for Pond to get back in this game, they need to have, you know, a run. They need to have at least a left point uh, swing around in order to, to be up by one in this fourth quarter. Oh, not another one. Bradley for three. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't really know about you, but this is... That, that might have been the nail in the coffin for the Putnam Beavers. You know, I'm not sure. I mean, of course, it's playoff time. You know, a lot of heroic uh, things happen. And uh, we shall see. The, you know, Putnam, they just need to uh, stop getting uh, pretty like a days ago. And uh, Hayes, jump shot, front you know, rim. I mean, I don't mean to pat us on the back, but we did point out that the shooting of St. John's would be a big factor in this game. So it's let me give you a little pat on the back right oh, now. Oh, thanks, man. I feel so special. And uh, number 30 for Hat. Oh, Malone was trying to. And uh, oh, and a charge. Oh, that oh, is a good call good. right there. That was a good call. Uh, I don't know if the St. John's player is hurt. He's stayed on the ground a little longer than normal right there. <laughs> probably a disbelief right there. He probably thought that was a block. On the team. 5.47 left to go in the final quarter. You know, this game could be winding down to be a blowout, but I hope it's one of the games for the ages because I drove all the way here to watch it. <laughs> yeah, same here. Hopefully, uh, you know, the uh, Putnam Beavers can uh, retaliate and try to, uh, you know, get back in this game. Abdul Roof has it, gives it to Martin. Pick by Malone. Hayes has it. Hayes, jump shot, you know, no good. There's just nothing you can do on a night that the shots aren't falling. And tonight, the shots are just not falling. 33 to the basket. Sean Burke. You know, the St. John's fans have been loud all night, but I think that they're really starting to get a feeling that they could be playing for a state championship on Saturday. Probably. Wow. St. John's 50, Putnam 35. His third team. Hayes with three fouls. They really got to go all out these last five minutes. And Putnam called a timeout. Man, it's, it would be really weird to see you know, the kind of Beavers to go out like this. You know, the Beavers, you know, kind of built, you know, a pretty good dynasty uh, in this last, you know, several years. And uh, they have, you know, some key players uh, graduating this year. They have, uh, you know, of course, Malone graduating and Abdul Barouf and as well as uh, Davidson. And, uh, of course, you know, if this is a pun and Beavers final game this season, you know, they do have uh, Taylon Martin, who might be, you know, the, I guess the next guy uh, next leader for this Putnam squad in future years. Yeah, and uh, Shepard has really preached the next man up mantra in his time, uh, short time as a head coach of the Putnam Beavers. 
I don't know if you're aware, but uh, Ty Nichols was one of the driving factors of their three state championship runs. And I think that uh, with him graduating, it was like, what, uh, what direction is the program going to go in now? Right. But I think Malone did a good job of picking up that mantle. And I think Martin's going to need to do a similar thing next year if the Beavers are going to have a, a, as much success as they've been having recently. Very true, very true. There are, there are a lot of teams on the come up in Western Mass, though, so I wouldn't be surprised to see Central or Amherst or uh, even yes. maybe uh, your home school, Longmeadow, make it out of the Western Mass. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, you know, uh, of course, there's a lot of uh, great potential out there. Uh, you know, when we were watching that Amherst game, um, you know, they have some great players that are, you know, of course, underclassmen as well that could uh, you know, help them out. So there's a lot of potential teams. But, of course, you know, we don't want to get too deep into the future right now. We're not ready to smoke. Oh. I don't know. This leads up to 17, and it the, looks like the game might be slipping away from the Putnam Beavers. Yeah, you know, under five minutes left to go. Abdul Roof has it. Guarded by number 30 at that time. Hayes has it. You know, the Beavers, they should just take it, give it to the basket. Malone. I don't know. I think the Foul. Beavers might be stuck on the wrong side of the dam on this one. Yeah. I mean, they would need to have an 18-point uh, swing around. Well, 12. I mean, let's not forget the chance of overtime. They could, they could have a 17-point swing. It's very true. I mean, hey, fun fact, folks. Uh, you know, uh, there's this basketball player by the name of Tracy McGrady. Uh, one scored 13 points in uh, about like 30 some seconds against the Spurs about like 10 years ago. Or so. Don't don't talk about my Spurs like that. You know, don't bring that up. Well, you know, facts are facts, and uh, you know, Chase McGrady. Why don't we talk about Reggie Miller? How about nine points in seven seconds? That that was really incredible, you know. Because you know, if you make that into 30 seconds, that's even more than 13 points. That's very true. Sorry to disrespect your Spurs. It's all good. It's all good. But you know, I'm a Celtics fan, and this whole time we've been dis disrespecting Tommy Heinsohn. That's true. Okay. Even Celtics fans don't like Tommy Heinsohn, though. Well, you know, it's, it's more of a love-hate relationship. It's a love-hate relationship. But Heinsohn makes me laugh a lot, you know. It's almost like you get a basketball game and a comedy all at once. Right, exactly. It's like, it's like seeing Eddie Murphy playing basketball, you know. It's something... Or Kevin Hart in the Celebrity All-Star Game. Well, that's annoying. <laughs> did, did you see that this year when he... As a coach, went into the locker room yeah. and put on a jersey and came out. The nerve on that guy. Yeah, Kevin Hart literally. One, was two, three. That's a travel that's right That's another there. travel. You know, he should call uh, Travelers because that was one heck of a travel right exactly. there. Exactly. So it looked like he's about to get his boarding pass oh, and going on a travel. Oh, pull. they need a three right here. From, oh, Malone's taking it inside. Martin. Taylor Martin. So the Florida's good for Martin. You know, are we sniffing the beginning of a Putnam run right here? We shall see. It's a 15-point game. I think a St. John score might be a nail in the coffin for the Beavers. Especially if Bradley makes another three. Oh, look at that inside pass. Luka Sevich. Luka Sevich. You know, the ball fakes are just fooling Putnam left and right. They got their trigger fingers ready, and they're jumping for anything. Very true. Hayes has it. Gives it to Martin. Hayes gives Abdul Rauf a three. The threes just have not been going in for the Beavers. And the St. John's retains possession. I think Putnam might be cracking right now. What is that up to, a 17-point lead? I think we might be in trouble right here. Yeah, I think so, too. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure how, you know, this is going to end. And we actually have some fans this leaving the stadium right now. I think that they've lost some faith in the Beavers. Uh, they're like losing some hope. Well, I mean, I feel, I don't feel like if the Putnam Beavers fans were as rowdy as the uh, St. John's fans, probably the Beavers could probably be as close. But, you know, you can't blame it on the fans. And yeah, uh, Floyd. At the, was at the end of the Beavers. day, I think it came down to the intensity of the players. St. John's Very wanted true. this so bad. And I, I don't think we can go back enough to how good of a season the Pioneers are having. They have amassed a 22-1 and record, 15-game winning streak coming into this game, undefeated on the road. All great accolades. And in fact, their uh, head coach has won over 850 games. So we, should we should we expect anything uh, less than success out of them? John. Right, very true. And uh, timeout, St. John's. You know, 19, 19 point, point lead. lead. I don't know. Zul, do you think that they can overcome this? Well, you know, like my man KG said, anything's possible. But, you know, the truth is, is that, you know, it's, it's nearly a 20 point game. And, 
the way how it would be different if like if St. John's completely collapses in the next three minutes. I don't know. Seconds. I just can't see that happening. But I don't think so because you know. St. John's have been really consistent throughout this game, like we said earlier. I mean, literally. I mean, from St. The start, John's must eat a lot of fiber because they've been regular today. They've been really regular. <laughs> they have just been shooting the threes well, crashing the boards, playing inside the post. I can't critique one piece of their game today. If I have to say one critique about St. John's, let me let me think. You know what? I don't want to get in trouble, so I'm not going to go there. So the timeout is finished. Come on, Zool, go there. No, no, What were no. you going to say? Give I'm us not, a hint. No, no. Want me to give you a hint? Give us a hint. Want me to give you a hint? Give us a hint. <laughs> well, let's this thing, uh, let's talk about um, the color board. <laughs> so, uh, Putnam is going uh, to uh, bring it up. <laughs> oh, Zool. And uh, let, let's see what Kearney has. He gets him Malone. Malone for three. You Off. Know. That shot right there epitomized what happened in this game for the Beavers. I'm starting to kind of give up, give up on, on my faith with the Beavers. I'm not, I'm not completely jumping off the bandwagon. Yeah. But I feel like this game might, might have slipped away from them. I think so too. You know, they actually did bring the deficit down to eight at one point. And then they just couldn't, they couldn't keep the run going and then the, the game just slipped away from them. A couple and ones, a couple threes. They would have been right back in it, but yeah, they yeah. just couldn't shoot. They could not shoot tonight. Very true. You know, each time when the Beavers would get, you know, cut the lead to single digits, St. John's will answer really quick. They never let up. Each they time, never let up. Each their time. foot has been on the gas pedal since they left their home. Exactly. Since they got on the bus, since that they got foot's on the been bus, pressed down. They got that good gas going, and they've been driving really smooth. They're running diesel, and they are booking it. <laughs> and uh, St. John, number 30 of St. John has being guarded by Hayes. You know, the polite thing to, to do, I think, would just be to kind of run the clock out right now and not push the lead up anymore. Oh, Malone nice swap. And it goes out of bounds with St. John's. I am shaking possession. my head right now. <laughs> Everything's going to be all right. Kind of like my man Bob Marley would say. Or my man Kendrick Lamar would say. Oh, we're going to be all right. Yep, yeah, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know, Zul. You've sung twice today. I don't know if you've exceeded your quota. Oh, no. Count the best of right there. Count it. And uh, St. John's are going to the basket. Well, you know, Zach, there's something about me is that I have great uh, harmonic uh, capabilities in my vocals. Who's your favorite artist, Zool? Of all time? Of all time. Ooh, that's kind of tough. You know, James Brown, uh, you know, is really cool, you know. So wait, for those of us, those of our listeners that are a little young, who is James Brown? Can you give us a little uh, sample? Well, he's the godfather of soul. <laughs> James Brown, get on up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I always <laughs> said earlier, you know, James Brown is going to be the key uh, guy in my wedding. You know, even though he's a dead, he's gonna, we're going to play his music the whole time. You know, even when we're slow dancing, me and my wife, we're going to play uh, Get On Up. And then when we leave, we're going to play Get On Up. And then once we go to our honeymoon, we're definitely going to blast Get On Up. Alex Bradley at the line for St. John's with two technical free throws. And a technical off. foul, I believe, was on Kearney. Uh, you you know, know, bounced the ball pretty high on I that. Think, I think Putnam's just shown that they don't have the mental toughness to hang with St. John's. No. It definitely is game over here. You know, it's a 20-point game. I, do, I might go back to my car right now. I think I got to beat the traffic. Oh, okay. No problem. You know, it is some pretty heavy traffic on the that best bike. One and one. I don't know. The opportunity, Adam. I think definitely line. looking across right there, those St. John's fans are happy to be back on this stage oh, and yes. to perform a lot better than they Adam did two years ago. Line. That is very true. You know, like we were saying earlier, you know, I, I believe, you know, St. John's came in this game with a little, um, little urgency, I feel like. You know, they and definitely I, had a I chip think on their shoulder. We knew that St. John's was cooking right. lately. 15 in a row, uh, I don't remember what the exact scores are, but they whooped up on the Central Mass competition, yes. including beating Franklin 67-52 in the Central Mass final. Yes. So I feel like St. John's been on a mission since the beginning of the season, and I wouldn't be surprised if they take home the state championship this year. Uh, more power to them, and good luck. Anyone that can beat the Putnam Beavers is uh, more than deserving of a state championship, in my opinion. Well, well said there, Zach, and St. John's has it, number 30. Trying to work something here. Floyd. 
I wonder when uh, Coach Shepard is going to give uh, Malone his moment and take him out, because I want to see the DCU Center give Number him a standing one, ovation. I know I'm going to stand up and give him a standing ovation. You shall see. I mean, of course, you know, let's see if St. You know, I don't know if the St. John fans are going to, you know, of course, do that. Who knows? I mean, we shall see. I mean, Malone has definitely, you know, been uh, one of the key figures. Malone's uh, been a centerpiece on this team all four years, and I think uh, they can owe a lot of their success to him and Nichols through this. Exactly, for winning, uh, you know, a couple state championships back in 2013 and 2014. And, uh, you know, in last season, unfortunately, the Beavers uh, couldn't win in the uh, state championship. Yeah, and, they, they were neck and neck with CM, Catholic Memorial basically the entire game, but uh, they couldn't close it out. They couldn't complete the three-peat. And I think in that game, they lost a little bit of their dynasty. And I don't know, the dynasty might be, the door might be closing on that tonight. Yeah. We'll have to see till next year, though. Under a minute left to go in the, in the, in the game. It looks like uh, they got a 21-point lead right now. It's unassailable. Anything now is just garbage oh, time. No, yeah. no. St. You know, John 60, punting on 41. You can't fault Malone. He's been doing everything he can to get this team back. He's still pressing, still playing hard D. Look at him with the steal right there. Unfortunately, cards just didn't work out for him this year. No, and you know, one thing we were saying too, is like, you know, the punt of Beavers, I know once, we, once the game started, uh, I felt like the Beavers were kind of shocked the way how, the, how St. John's came out so early. I feel like they kind of got a little startled. They weren't expecting for uh, St. John's to come out so hot. And I think from since that moment, especially you know at the end of the first half when we saw that play, I believe it was Bradley that shot that three. Then the end of this first half, you know, really summed up how uh, St. Yeah. John's been playing. And since then, you know, they've been cruising. You know, a buck twenty-two left. I think that we could chalk this one up to St. John's, but we can't take anything away from the Putnam Beavers this season. Just a little recap of the season. 21 and 2 on the season, Western Mass Championship. I mean, a 39 and 20 game from one of their players, two 30 point games from Hayes. It's really a special bunch that they're putting out on the floor, and I can't stress enough how special Taylon Martin is. We really got to keep our eyes out for him. Yes, only a freshman and already, you know, six foot two and, uh, you know, been playing really well as they're out in these playoffs. Uh, this season, uh, the best was good right there. This season, Martin averaged uh, about 10.2 points per game. And, uh, and as far as the other players for Putnam, Malone averaged uh, 19 points per game and he's averaged 15.3 uh, points per game. So, you know, uh, it's just it's just a little sad to see a season end like this in a blowout, but, you know, sometimes four, that's, that's just how it happens. Yeah, you know, that's just what happens, you know, sometimes, you know. You know, I, all dynasties, you know, uh, always have to come to an end. You know, of course, yeah. you know, in Japan, the Jing dynasty, of course, ended a bunch, you know, so, of you course. Know, your Celtics haven't had a good dynasty since, you know. Since the 60s. Oh, that ball went straight and smacked the Putnam player yeah. in the head. I don't know what's going on what's now. What's going on? I feel like that that basically sums up Something the game up, for the right. Putnam Beavers, don't you don't you agree? I agree. You know, like you were saying, you know, like the Celtics, you know, they had a dynasty in the sixties and they haven't had a dynasty since. You know, they haven't had no. a dynasty since Martin Luther King Jr. had been marching down in DC. My Spurs have been having a dynasty since nineteen ninety eight, since I was born, so I think that they've really been I don't know. The Putnam dynasty definitely stacks up with the best in that I've seen in my lifetime. Count the basket, Tyler Moore with the layup and the foul. foul number four, and I believe first, that, let's the see if the Pundit Beavers can score 18 points in 12.7 seconds in this game. I really think that they should uh, pull Malone out right now. Yeah, I think right now will be a good moment. I feel like they should give him his moment to be recognized by the fans. St. John's doing yeah. a whole platoon substitution, all five players coming out. The thunderous applause. I see an American flag being waved. This basically is America. Freedom at the at the max. Oh, thank you. God bless America. Thank until, you. Until thank Donald, you, James Brown. Thank you, James Brown, for God blessing America. And uh, and so once John Trump Tucker and once Tucker Trump becomes president, that's when I'm bouncing to Canada. Morgan, 41, Sacco, 40, Jackson, Evans, 35, see, Lord there they are. That is a classy move. Pulling Malone out. Well, Zach, that was a really loud clap. <laughs> you know, I got to give respect to my man Malone. Yeah, he's been putting in work tonight. Tyrone Daniels. 
You know, some things do have to come to an end. And, uh, you know, 12.7 seconds left to go in this game. You know, I can, I can just see the heartbreak I'm alone right now. I, yeah. I know that exact feeling. Not, I've never gotten this far in a tournament, but we've all had this feeling of losing, and yeah. it just really hurts. Yeah, but I remember when I was a kid, uh, you know, my team lost in in-town low matter basketball in the first round. And that's the end of the game, folks. Putnam. 48, St. John 65, St. John defeated the Beavers by 17 points in the Division I Massachusetts State Semifinals game. And St. John will advance to the state championship this Saturday at the Massachusetts Center. And St. John will be playing against Camden Ridge and Latin. And whoever will win that game will be the new uh, state champion in uh, this season. And, uh, you know, that'll probably be, you know, the end, well, probably for the Beavers, you know. They do have some great upside. And, uh, you know, we shall see how the future is. And uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in to Springfield Hoops here on Focus Springfield Community Television. I'm Zafika Manza, alongside Zach Holland. Tune in next time.